our victory, the curse is undone. Its power is broken because of the blood. The captives are singing, the battle is won. Salvation belongs to our God. There's places in God that we can go that we've never been because his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his goodness and his love and his mercy far passes anything that we could imagine. I challenge you this morning. I challenge you this year. Don't just be an observer, but be a participator. And I promise you, God will take us somewhere we've never been. Is anybody with me this morning? Is anybody with me? Let's press in and see if God will prove himself yet again. And I am 100% confident that he will. Amen. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place this morning. Come and have your way today, God. We long for an encounter with you like we've never experienced before, God. Pour out in this place this morning, God. I pray if anyone here, God, doesn't know you, that today is the day of salvation. And God, that anyone here that does know you, God, they experience your glory and your power today like never before. God, we long for an encounter with heaven today, God. We long for an encounter with your presence, God, that will be life-changing and destiny-altering. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says, amen. Worship with us this morning. Trust in your name, Jesus. He's able to save and deliver us. Oh, we put our hope in your name, Jesus. Come on, let's declare this together. Blessing. Blessing and honor, glory and power unto our God forever and ever. All of the honor, all of the praise is yours.
God reigns Come on, you sing forever. this one. Our God is in control. Steadfast, unmovable. Nothing's impossible. Our God reigns. Oh, yes, you do, Jesus. Nobody like him. His presence is in this building right now. And where his presence is, there's joy. Where his presence is, his peace. This surpasses all understanding. Jesus Christ, bring us your peace this morning. We know you're here. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness fails, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God will never fail. No, he won't. And my God will never fail. Fail. Sing this out today. Cause I'm, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Cause the battle belongs to you, Lord. I wanna see. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle, for the battle belongs to you, Lord.
for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good here with us, Jesus, in the middle of the battle, in the middle of the struggle, in the middle of the heartache. We bless your name, Jesus, this morning, because you're able to win the battle, Jesus. You are victorious. Oh, we give you worship this morning, Jesus. There's no one like you. Come on, right. 
right where you're at. Just praise Him. Hallelujah to the King.
just ask you, I don't know if you've ever been like me, you may be here today and everything going well for you. You're not in a trial, you're not having to praise before your breakthrough. Maybe you're in your breakthrough season. Praise the Lord. You ought to be up here shouting and dancing if that's you today. But for many of us, sometimes we're right in the middle of it. You know, we're in the midst of the storm. And even as we've now turned the page and the calendar has turned, and we now are supposed to be seeing 2020, Sometimes it's a little blurry before the sight becomes perfect. So I, when Jesus healed the blind man, he said, I see men like trees walking. I see better than I saw before, but it's not completely yet. Not all the way there. And sometimes that's what we don't understand, that songs like this help us get over that moment where we're like, we're pressing our way in, we're pushing our way through. And I don't know if you're like me, but this is just what I see. I I see in pictures when the Lord's speaking to me. But as you were singing that, I'm just like, I see myself standing out in the middle of this big old dust bowl. Dust and mess all around me. And there I am, high heel shoes and all, standing in the dirt. And I got my hands lifted. And I'm saying, God, I'll praise you before I ever see this thing break. I will give you praise, I will give you glory, I will give you honor because my praise is not contingent upon my circumstances. You're worthy of my praise whether things are going well or whether they're not. But I do know that my praise will bring a breakthrough. My praise will shake jail cells. My praise will create earthquakes. I understand that my praise is dangerous. That's why the enemy wants to shut all of us up and shut all of us down. It's why he wants to put a muzzle around us. It's why he wants to cause us not to be able to breathe. And he wants to suffocate all of us because he knows the thing that's in your mouth is a lethal weapon. So I just want to challenge you this morning. And this is what I just felt. And you don't have to do it. But if you choose to, I just feel like you need to somehow step out of your seat. If you can do it in your seat, you do it in your seat. I'm cool with that. But if you got to get out in the aisle, you get out in the aisle. And I want you to take a praise position, a posture of praise. And I want them to sing this again, but I want you to be saying it just as a victor standing on a dirty, dusty uh, uh, place, a, 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 a terrain, if you will, and to see yourself standing there and saying, God, it's me and you out here. Nobody else. I don't see the army. I don't see the chariots. I don't see the angel host. God, it's me and you out here. So I'm going to stand on this dirty soil. And I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to assume a praise position. And I want to just challenge you. I'm telling you, I know sometimes people think, well, why does they make us move? Why do they push us to do things? Sometimes you have to get out. Why do you think Jesus led them out of the city to heal them? Sometimes you got to get out of your norm. You got to get out of the thing that you've been stuck in for so long. And you got to shake yourself and say, if I don't move two inches, at least I've moved two inches out of what I was in. I haven't moved a foot yet, but I'm two inches closer to my complete and total breakthrough. So I just want to challenge you, however that looks to you this morning. For me, I see myself this morning. I'll praise before my breakthrough with my feet like in a marching stance. (laughs) So God, I will praise before my breakthrough. It's not contingent on what's going on today or tomorrow or next week, God. Because I know who you are, God. I've got a track record with you, God. I've seen you do the miraculous. I've seen you heal the sick. I've seen you do things that no one said you could do, God. So I'll praise before my breakthrough. I assume the praise position, God. I get my mouth open. I get my hands up, God. I get my feet in a locked position to say, God, you're going to do what only you said that you could do, God. But I know that everything is found in you, Jesus. I'll praise before my breakthrough. 
come on, I'm giving you a chance to get in your praise position. You're going, does she know the words? I know the words. I'm telling you, assume a praise position, whatever that looks like for you. Some of you, it might be kneeling down and saying, God, this is the humble, the most humble position I can get in, whatever it is for you. I'm going to praise you, Lord, before I ever see 2020, God. Before I ever see, God, those men like trees, walking like real men, God, I'm going to praise you, even though it's blurry right now. And I can't completely see everything just right, God. I will live my I'm going to live my song. You see, God, I'm going to praise before. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to praise you, Lord. sing I'm gonna sing I'm gonna sing God say it again I will praise before my breakthrough till my song becomes my triumph today oh God and I'm gonna sing because I trust you my faith in action God Praise up to God this morning. Oh, till my song. I'm singing to you, God. I'm singing to you, God. Oh, trust you, Lord. He who came in power. See, he who came in power. This is why we can praise him, church. He's coming. ever going to get well that son or that daughter they're never going to give their life to Jesus things are never going to turn around in your finances here we go into another year same song same verse going to be the same same that's a lie of the devil and so that's why words like these come to try to get you in agreement with God to say I come out of agreement with the enemy I'm not going to keep saying that if you we've talked about it in our home how many of you like had too much holiday Anybody like me and like, it's enough, I'm over it. I mean, we've laid in our pajamas for hours. I'm like, no makeup, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, I got to get up and get going. We got to move again. And that's exactly what happens sometimes when we get in that mindset of whatever the enemy is saying to us. It's like we just get so slumpy and so, God, are you ever going to do it? Do do I, my faith just gets so flat. And it's songs like this that come to remind us, he who came in power, he's coming again to you. 
He's not slack concerning his promises toward us. You need to be reminded. I don't care if you've been sick 44 years. Today may be the day that God heals your body. And this is the 45th year where you are no longer sick. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's the God that we serve. You may have had a condition that you've had for 12 long years. But today's the day when you begin to see Jesus. And suddenly you begin to be healed of your infirmity. You never know. That's why I walk around expecting a miracle every day. Because you never know. This might be the day they didn't know when Jesus was coming to their to their village but today might be the day that he walks into the village that's why it was such a noisy thing hey it's Jesus it's Jesus he's the one who's been healing people but we don't believe in that healing stuff well then don't show up with the crowd because Jesus is looking for people to touch and make whole and make healed and if he's got to raise the dead if he's got to interrupt a funeral he'll interrupt a funeral so I'm thankful for that this morning, aren't you? Will you just lift your hand one last time with me? Father, we are grateful today that God, you give us a voice, you give us limbs, God, to extend to the heavens, to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We lift our eyes to the hills where our help comes from, God. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for a mouth like a mighty trumpet that we can declare and decree the truth of God's word. I thank you that even though we can't see it sometimes, we know that your word shows us that it shatters the stronghold of the enemy. And I thank you for that ability, God. Things that we don't understand that by faith we have to just apprehend and arrest. But we know your word is true, God. And we are thankful for that today, God. And we're a Bible-believing church this morning. We put your word, God, in its supreme seat today, God. And we say that you are true and you are righteous and you are honest and you are long-suffering and you are patient and you are loving toward us, God. And we thank you, God, that even while we can't see it, you're working right now, God. You're working as we just have stood and said, I praise you before my breakthrough. God, I believe that 2020 is going to be a year of great breakthrough in the lives of your people. I do believe that there are decades of promises that people have been holding on to. And for whatever reason, God, I believe this is the moment that they're going to begin to see clearly like they've never seen before. I believe there's going to be shackles and bondages that have been on families for decades, God, that this is going to be the season when all of that breaks off, when stuff that they've not been able to shake off, God, this is going to be the season that it gets shook off. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you, God, that there are those that have been tormented in their mind, God, by mental illness, God, and addictions even, God. And this is going to be their year, God, that they begin to see victory breakthrough in their life, God. They're going to begin to get it together in a way they've never gotten it together before, God. I thank you for that, God. There are people in this room that are frustrated, God, because they can't find love in their relationships. They cannot seem to make it work. I thank you, God. This is going to be a year of restoration, God, of the fullness of of your word in the lives of your people I thank you for it God not because I say it but because you say to say it God and whatever you say for us to decree God we know that when you release it from heaven it's released into the earth God and it brings power to shake and transform things God so I thank you Lord and I ask you God for that faith and that trust that we've sang about today God to trust you even when we can't see it, to trust you. That means to go ahead and put our feet in motion, to go ahead and get into action, God, and begin to put things into place. And we move by faith. We move by trust today, God. And we're grateful, Lord, for your touch on our lives and for your promises over your people. We're thankful today in Jesus' name. Can we just give God a hand clap? He doesn't need it, but we need to give God praise. We need to give God honor. We need to put our hands together and say, I acknowledge you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I acknowledge you as the sovereign God over all the earth. I acknowledge you as God in my life. I acknowledge you. I didn't get here by myself. I can't get through this life by myself. I acknowledge you, Jesus, today. King of kings and Lord of lords. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, Jesus. Well, happy new year to everybody. Are you glad? Did you ever think you would see 2020? Wow, but here we are. Before you're seated, I want you to just take a minute. I know some of you are just so ready to sit down. You've been sitting all Christmas long. You've been sitting at a table because I have to. 
and you've been operating that fork and that spoon all Christmas long. Now what's happened is you've gone lazy. You're like, all I can do is sit out. No, you can do better than that. I want you, if you're able, if you will, just will you just move across this room? Will you shake a hand? Will you hug a neck? Will you make each other welcome today? We might have guests in this room. Will you make sure and reach out to them? Say, Happy New Year. We're glad to have you today. God bless you. Morning City Light and Center Point family. It's officially 2020 and we have a lot of exciting things on the horizon. Go ahead and grab your calendars and set some reminders. I'm Nate and this is The Scoop. This Monday, January 6th, we'll begin our 21 days of prayer and fasting. We truly believe that when we set aside time and push away our plates to meet with God, He shows up in amazing ways. If you've never taken part in a time of prayer and fasting, make 2020 your year. We're believing this fast will set the tone for our entire year. City Light Kids volunteers will be having a training workshop on January 11th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is for all current volunteers and also those who are interested in being a part of the team. Please see Pastor Angie for more details. For the entire 21 days of prayer and fasting, we'll be having midweek prayer services at both of our locations from 7 to 8.15. Our kids and youth will still be meeting during this time, so please bring the entire family as we come together to seek God. On Sunday, January 12th and 19th, we'll be having a Sunday night family prayer service at both of our locations at 6 p.m. Bring the whole family and invite a friend. It's going to be a special night. On the final week of our fast, we'll be coming together for two special nights of prayer. The first will be on January 23rd in Griffin, and the second will be on the 24th in LaGrange. Transportation can be provided for those of you who are wanting to travel to another campus for each night. Sign up in the lobby if you need a ride. On Saturday, January 25th, we'll be gathering with churches from all over North Georgia for a day of prayer in Cartersville, Georgia at the Church at Liberty Square. There will be a time of worship and prayer with a special message from Pastor John Gray from Relentless Church. This is an all-day event. We'll be leaving from both locations at 8 a.m. and stopping for lunch on our way back home to Griffin and LaGrange. Sign up today in the lobby to secure your spot on the bus. We hope everyone will attend. Well, family, that's all we have for you today. As always, make sure you're following us on Instagram and Facebook to keep up with these and all other events. Once again, I'm Nate, and that's The Scoop. I asked uh, Mark if I could just come and just echo uh, the one announcement about the prayer and fasting, and I want to help you. You know, so many people um, have never heard about that, and they've never heard about it as a corporate body, um, and, and they wonder about that. Can I do that? Should I do that? I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. I, I know many of us are ready to go on diets, and let's be honest, we need to, right? I mean, let's just confess right here in God's house, right, after these two weeks, we need to. But, but I want to encourage you not to do it as a diet. I want to encourage you about whatever it is that you give up, whatever it is that you choose to say, God, I'm setting this aside. I want to draw closer to you. And I want that to be your intention this year, that you truly begin to say, God, help me 
to see you. This is what I want to say to you about that. God is coming in greater realms of glory in the earth. That's what he's doing. And so he says that if you seek me, you will find me. But he says to us, you're the one that has to do the searching. This is why some people can sit in church and say, I didn't get anything out of that. They didn't come as a seeker. They didn't come as a searcher oftentimes. But those people that come with anticipation and expectation and they say, I know I'm going to see a victory. I know it. I'm looking for it. I was singing the song this morning coming to church. I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. I feel the intangible. And it goes on. Just believe and receive it. God will perform it today, today, today. Just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. You go, I don't even know that song. Here's what I want you to understand. My heart is already on. I'm looking for a miracle. I'm looking for it. My heart is set on it. God, you do the impossible. So God, my heart is set with anticipation and expectation. And that's my prayer for you this year. We're going to be leading you in some time of Bible time and all of that as well. We'll do some of that through social media and and different platforms. But we want to invite you into this moment. And then I want to say this to you. We have set aside times of corporate prayer. Can I tell you, let's not wait until we have a national tragedy before this house is filled with people who know how to pray. We are praying people. Go, I don't even know what prayer is. Prayer is talking to God. It's, com- it's communion with God, conversation with God. And I believe that in this new year, God's going to lead us to begin to decree some things. This is the year where God's going to use our voice like never before. But if you don't know how to use your voice, and you go, well, I'm not a singer, I'm not a, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a prophet, you don't have to be. You have to get in your word and decree what the word of God has said over your life. You open your mouth. Yes, you open it. I don't like that. I'm a quiet person. Okay, well, sometimes you need to meditate on the word and let what you've been meditating on come out of your mouth and make a decree and make a declaration and watch God work on your behalf. So I want to just encourage you in that. Don't just sit back and say, well, that doesn't apply to me. You get it in your spirit. I'm looking for a miracle. Every time we come, God, we're looking for a miracle. We know what you can do, God. And we want to get our hearts expecting on it. So I just want to encourage you with that to join us in this time of prayer and fasting this this month. And uh, then we're going to end with a big day uh, there at uh, uh, Cartersville Liberty Square, just like we did last year, as Nate said a moment ago. You're going to love it. We're going to have, I guess, a sign up for the bus and all of that, just like we did last year. So we'll be making that known to you so that you can get a seat on the bus. And it's a special, special day. And uh, we'll be telling you more about it. We'll give you more information. But right now, get your heart set on God. Amen. How many of you came ready to give to the Lord this morning? Did you come ready to give? Yes. Listen, y'all got over Christmas, right? We were all getters. Some of us were givers, but a lot of us were getters, right? We got a lot of good things and uh, uh, a lot of stuff and uh, probably stuff now that you have to have a yard sale, you know, because you got so much stuff, you got to find a place to put it so the old's out and the new's got to be in, right? Well, uh, I'm excited that we get to start this year off giving together, giving together. There's something so special about it. Have you ever met somebody who's very generous? I don't mean just they're throwing money around, but I mean they're generous. They're generous with their time. They're generous with their attention. They're generous with their love to us. Doesn't it make you feel so good? Ah, I love to be around generous people. And with God as my help, I long to be a generous person. There's nothing better than seeing a smile on someone's face that has received generosity in their life. And my prayer is that this will be the year. I mean, I'm telling you, Griffin Center Point, you are a generous body of believers. But my prayer is God make this the year like this church has never seen, to be a generous giving church. What that means is the blessing has to come to your home. And when it does, you can't be stingy with it. You say, God, I got to trust you. I want to honor you. I want to give. I want to be generous. And I want you to do that. I want you to join with us. I, wanna, I want this to be my most generous year 
that I've ever lived on the earth. I do. I want that. I want to love people. Do you know love is what leads people to Jesus? Do you know that when they see that sloppy, ridiculous love and they're going, why do you love them? Why do you care for them like you do? Because Jesus loves me that way. And then it leads them. Your kindness will lead people to repentance at times. It's crazy how that happens. So I want us to ask the Lord this year, God, make us generous people in our tithe, in our offering, in our giving. Keep showing us ways that we can bless the body, bless the city, bless the community, bless the nation, bless the world. Whatever way God gives us, we want to remain generous. Amen. Will you stand with me one more time as you've got your giving now in your hand? Maybe you're choosing to do it digitally, however you do it. I tell people, God is not afraid of your iPhone to be in the air. If you've got an iPhone, iPad, don't be ashamed about it. Whatever device you give it on, stretch that to the Lord on this first Sunday of 2020 that we say, God, we give you everything. We give you everything this year, God. It all belongs to you, but we dedicate it and we devote it to you. Will you do that? Will you lift your seed now? And if you don't have anything in your hand, just lift your hand and begin to thank the Lord for this year. Father, we are grateful that we have been able to have eyes to see the turning of this calendar, God, to go into a year that probably most of us never dreamed we would ever see. But here we are standing in the land of the living, God, and we are here today, and we are thankful today, God, and you are making us generous people. You know why, God? Because we want you to. We've asked you. We want to be generous. We've been the recipients of great generosity, God. You gave your only son to save us. We know what it feels like to have incredible generosity bestowed upon us. And I pray now, God, that you will cause us to turn that generosity upon others, God, upon this house, God, that we will continue to be generous, God, in the things that you have entrusted to us, that you've allowed us to steward over, God. I pray, Lord, that you will cause us to be mighty, mighty, generous people. Continue to give us projects. Continue to give us things, Lord, that we need to be about the Father's business doing, I pray. And help us, oh God, continue to funnel your resources through us from heaven to the earth. God, so that we can see your kingdom advance, so that souls can be one for the glory of God and people can be loved, the, the naked can be clothed, the poor can be fed, the hungry can be fed, God, all of those things, God, the orphans and the widows can be taken care of, God, if we will just continue to trust you in an area of generosity. I pray blessings upon your people as we step into this new year, God, with our hearts set on generosity. I pray that you will bless us abundantly so we then might be a blessing. We give you praise for it now. In Jesus' name, let's worship the Lord together in our giving. Amen. God bless you. I echo Michelle's response about Christmas. Uh, it has been more than I needed. Uh, I can't get in my jacket. I mean, I pulled it out two weeks ago and made sure it would work because Michelle's family came in and she makes me take everything out of my closet so that they have full access. She doesn't even allow me to go into my bedroom to get clothes out. So I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm like, okay. And this morning, I put on the jacket and I went, oh God, what will I do? And it was about 5.30, 6 a.m. Well, they're still asleep in the room and Michelle's still napping. And I said, I'm going to have to go with one that don't fit this morning because it was too cold to come without one. I mean, so, um, yeah, I've, I've got too much Christmas going on inside of me. And so uh, hopefully that will change. Terry, you got a witness. Come on, brother. Amen. Come on. And so uh, we're just believing God for a great time of fasting. As Michelle said, it's not a, it's not a, a, a diet. Let me just tell you this too. And I've had several people say this uh, over the years. Um, we <coughs> uh, don't judge what people fast. You know, I've heard people say, well, uh, fasting is giving up all food. You can't have any food if you're going to fast. Let me tell you something. I know some people that are addicted to video games. Some of your children are addicted to video games. If they say, mom and dad, I'm going to give up my video games. Don't you one time say, nope, you got to give up your milk or your, or your sugars or whatever. Honey, you give up your video games to, to take time to be with God. That's fine. You let them give up whatever they're willing to give up. 
and you give up and make, make it hurt. I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I fast. It, I fast breakfast. That's my favorite thing to fast because I never eat breakfast. <laughs> I just, I'm just not a breakfast guy. So when, when people say, let's fast, I go, well, I'll give up breakfast. <laughs> it's a breeze. I know some people that have started eating the Daniel fast food all the time. They don't ever eat meat. They eat Daniel. They eat vegetables and fruits and nuts all the time, and that's all they that's all they do. So when it comes to a Daniel fast, to go, oh, okay, well I'll do that. That's not a big deal. And so a couple of years ago, I, I mentioned to Michelle, I said, I think I'm going to fast. Uh, I'm going to do the Daniel fast, but I'm going to do it where I don't go to any restaurants because I'd gotten in a habit of I could go buy Taco Bell and pick up refried beans and rice. I get three beans, two rice, because they give me, anyway, and uh, <laughs> give me energy. And uh, I'd go by and pick those up. And I, I mean, I was, I, I, there was no struggle involved. And then some people spend more time looking for foods that are acceptable on the Daniel Fast and spend more time working to men, plan a menu. And they never spend any time with God because they're always busy trying to figure out what they're going to eat. <laughs> Just give up something that's going to hurt. I told Michelle when I did the restaurants, I said, oh, God, this is hard. <laughs> and you're laughing. I know some people that give up Dr. Peppers. I don't know how many Dr. Peppers you drink in a day. You want to give up Dr. Peppers and that's your passion and that's what, that's great. Do it. My Lord, we keep judging people and we, I'm not going to preach my sermon yet. Here we go. Let's get started. I'm just asking you to, to participate. Something, give up something and say, God, I want to draw close to you this year. It's not about what you give up. It's about that you take the time you would be doing those activities and you spend time with God. Second thing, that Saturday is going to be special. I know many of you went last year with us. We had a great crowd there. And uh, this year is going to be even bigger. It's going to be incredible. And John Gray, many of you may know him, uh, is going to be there. It's going to be off the chain incredible. So I uh, want you to participate with us in that as well. That's at the end of the month. Wednesdays, Sundays, be here. We're going to pray. You go, what is it going to look like? It looks like we're going to pray. We're not going to do singing. We're not going to do a lot of talking. We're going to do a lot of praying. And I know sometimes that makes us nervous because we get, if you say, I can only pray 15 minutes, come and pray 15 minutes, read your Bible the other 45 minutes. It's fine. Do whatever is comfortable for you and, and, and seek God. Okay. Today, I want to talk to you about kind of the theme for this coming year. Uh, I, and I got to be honest with you, when you come to 2020, it just kind of sits there in your face, right? I mean, you don't have to be creative to come up with a theme for 2020. I mean, like, focus 2020, you know, 2020 vision. I mean, it's pretty easy. I mean, remember when it was like 2002, uh, there's plenty to do in 2002. That may have taken a little creativity. Some churches, 2011 is the year to go to heaven. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> don't, be, don't be the devil. Uh, don't be the devil's bait in 2008. Okay, that's great. That's cute. 2020 is focus. 2020 vision. I mean, I... I, when I was praying this year and last year we came together and we, we, we a year ago today was, was a year we've kind of started this journey and we, we had already kind of set the vision at, at, at LaGrange that we were going to be better together. And then all of this came along and we went, wow, God has kind of spoke to us ahead of time to go, we're better together. And we felt like we really are and continue to be better together. Uh, I, we don't need just another cheesy saying, though. We, we, don't, we felt like better together was really not just a, a yearly thing. It's like we've got to learn how to be better together, that together we build, we grow. And uh, the two churches have come together. Um, we share pastors. Uh, we share ideas. And we've fallen in love with one another. The other day in the office, Carly asked, she said, when are we going to get to, I'm, I'm doing this in Carly's voice, so just in case you didn't know, this is the way she talks. Oh, when are we going to get together with the other staff? I miss them. I'm like, oh, cry me a river. 
How about you just do your job, Carly? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> she back there somewhere? Uh, uh, yeah. She's in the baby room, right? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, that's awesome. You can tell her later what I said. And, and what's funny is we were in a meeting in LaGrange and something was said about something. We were, we were talking about doing something at both campuses and uh, AJ spoke up and said, uh, I don't think it's fair to require Carly to do that. He didn't fight for himself. He's like, I, I'll do it. I just don't think it's fair to require Carly to do that. And I went, Carly, people are even fighting for you in other cities. This is crazy. We've become a family. We, we've, been, we, we, we've, we've connected in ways and we really are better together. And so when I was praying about this year and I said, God, what do you want to speak to our church? What do you, what do you want to che- preach? What, what do you want to speak to his church? This one word kept pressing in my spirit. This one word kept coming to me and it's not profound. It's not a long word. If you know me, I don't know a lot of long words. Seven is usually my limit. And uh, this one is a very simple word and the word is we. I felt like that God was saying that we are the church, that we are uh, to make this bold statement, this bold pro- proclamation, and, and the statement that we should be pushing to, uh, to, to everyone that comes in contact with us, that we are a part of the body, that we make up the body. And here's what I need you to know, that there are people outside the body now that we want to go, it's them. I mean, you know, it's amazing how we divide these days. I mean, everything seems to be divided. Everybody takes odds with one another. I mean, you got the, those kids, those old people in the church. It's always the, the battle between the new music and the old music, right? I mean, it's always the battle between can we do it the new way or can we just revert back to the old way, the tried and true method. We, we divide when it comes to our politics, Oh, it's those Democrats. Oh, the Republicans are have, a, have an issue. We, we, we divide when we talk about addictions. Well, those are the people with addictions. Really, those people? Can I tell you that those people, not just addictions, but all of the people we've talked about so far, are people that need to be a part of we rather than a part of them. See, Jesus came to save everybody. And he doesn't love you more than he loves the man who shot up the church in in Texas the other day. I know that may be hard for you to understand. But God died for all of us. We should all be included in the kingdom. Now, will everyone accept the kingdom? Will everyone accept Jesus? No, but we are not the ones that should sit around dividing. Those people that are tree huggers, uneducated, the rich and wealthy, the poor, the unchurched, the lost, those on the outside looking in, we divide and we all do it. We all do it. The other day I was I was strolling, I'm a, I'm a big Facebook marketplace guy and I like to see what's out there for sale and not that I need anything. I mean, I just had Christmas I and mean, I got everything I wanted. Nothing, I don't need anything. As, as one guy said, we in the Pentecostal churches go down the aisles praying in tongues, looking for people, looking for stuff for people, already have everything uh, because we're trying to find that perfect gift. I don't, I don't need anything, but I got that. I got great stuff. This girl was selling some shirts, though. It was Alabama shirts. And she put, would somebody please buy these great shirts for me because I'm an Auburn fan. And I went underneath her post and I made a comment. And I said, if you're really an Auburn fan, you'd throw those Alabama shirts in the trash. You're trying to sell them when you ought to be throwing them away. You're not really an Auburn fan. Shut up. I didn't go that far, but that's what I thought. Because if I see a Duke hat, I don't need to sell it. It's going in the trash. I mean, it's just, but we divide, right? We find our area, we find our place, and we go, this is where we're staking our claim, and everybody else is the enemy. 
You say, well, that's not the way it is. Isn't it really the way it is now, though? That, that we, we want to divide with race and creed and economics and football and everything. Because that's the way we've been raised. That's the way we do. We divide and we devalue the other side. We always make them less than or worse or the enemy. But when we really start reminding ourselves that but for grace go I. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I might too be lost. And it changes my perspective of who they are. That they are simply looking and needing the grace of God. We all would be trashed. We all would simply not have heard or received yet. So let us not preach the whole let me tell you about, let me, let, me, let me not get into it until I get, my introduction can't be the whole sermon. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to start going to where we're going to preach at. Because I just want to keep going, but I'm, I'm not. I've got to stop. Three simple things. When the church grabs hold of we. When the church and the people of God get past division and start looking at aligning with the word of God, what it will do for us. First thing, there's power. When we're, when we're together, there's power. First Peter chapter two, verse nine says this. But we are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. I love that he says, a holy nation. See, too many times we get this idea that it is about me. I want us to just kind of glance at Peter for a second when he goes into the to the jail and he's, he's been put in prison and here goes Peter and he, he's laying in a prison and the church goes to prayer. And in the midst of their prayer, God sends an angel to the jail cell. And when, he gets, when the angel gets there, guess what he finds Peter doing? You guys know? You've read it? You know what he's doing, right? He's sleeping. In 2020, maybe we can learn how to rest in God as well. Instead of fretting about everything, maybe we'll learn that God's got it and we don't have to control it. That's just a side note. I, you, don't, you don't get charged for any of that. So the angel comes, gets him out of jail, and they get to the door where the church is praying and a young girl comes to the door and when she opens the door, she can't believe it's Peter. And she goes back inside and leaves Peter at the door. Tells the people that are praying, hey, Peter's at the door. You know what they say? Uh-uh. He ain't there. They don't even believe it. I don't know, and I'm, I'm getting old. We were talking this morning about our age. And uh, I'm getting older, and I, I forget things. So if I've shared illustrations with you before, uh, just, just ignore me. And no, I've already heard this story. I won't, I won't worry about it. But it's... This thing with Peter and, and believing in prayer and, and really being a powerful source together, when we really come together and we become we, it's kind of like the, the church in Texas. You heard about it, that, that, that uh, there was a, a bar that was moved in close to the church, and the church didn't want the bar there. So they began to have prayer meetings about the bar, and they wanted it removed. And so they're having prayer meeting about the bar. And it was out in Texas. And you know, in Texas during the summer, they have a lot of thunderstorms and stuff. Well, a thunderstorm rolled through the town one day and lightning hit the bar. Burned it to the ground. You know what the owner did? He took the church to court. <laughs> and when they got to court, the judge heard the trial and he said, let's go, give me your case. 
the judge, the, the guy with on the bar said, the church was praying for my bar to get shut down and to go out and out. And they prayed and God sent lightning and burned my, my, my store down. The church, on the other hand, when the judge heard their case, they said, we didn't do anything. It's not our fault that his bar burned down. The judge stopped and he said, now I've got a guy that doesn't believe in prayer, but he believes that you caused this. He said, I've got a church that prays and believes in prayer and they won't take credit for it. <laughs> Can I tell you that's the way we are sometimes? That we pray and we say, oh, we, the body of Christ, come together and we don't believe we have any power. Can I tell you that when they prayed, God sent the answer and delivered Peter and they couldn't believe it. There is power in we when we pray, when we touch heaven, when we come together on Sundays and Wednesdays over the next couple of weeks. We have power. You have power to change. I remember one particular gentleman, he said, we had heard about all the bad things that were happening in Haiti he said, we didn't know what to do. And he said, I told all the kids in the college, he said, we're going to buy stock in the sugar cane companies that are over there that are taking advantage of the people in Haiti. And they said, what can we do? What can we do with one, one set of stock per person? There's people that own hundreds of thousands of stock in this company. How will our one stock make a difference? He said, well, when you own a share of stock, you can go to the stockholders meeting. And they, as the body of Christ, showed up at a stockholders meeting where they didn't feel like they had any power because of man's agreement, but because they came in God's name, they spoke to the people about, when they got their chance, they spoke to the people about the, the atrocities that were happening in Haiti to the people that were working in the sugarcane fields and how they were living in unsafe and unpure conditions. And after they had their talk, guess what? They changed it. Just a couple of young students from a college who said, you know what, we can make a difference. Guys, this church can make a difference if we'll come together as the body of Christ and say, we have power. Second thing I want you to realize that the power of we comes with the power of agreement. That we harnesses agreement. Joshua chapter four, uh, 24, verse 15 says, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house. I, I got to read this to you because a friend of mine posted this the other day and I said, this is, it's amazing how there's confirmation. Today we talked, Michelle talked about agreement. In a few minutes we're going to talk about victory. And the song talked about victory. I was like, and then I read this. I'm like, man, this is just agreement. The gentleman's name is Brock Bruce. He was responding to a post on Excellent Church of God Pastor. It's just a, a site where they ask, people ask questions and things come up. And something was mentioned. Uh, and, and this was my friend Brock Bruce's response to someone on the site. He's a pastor in Mobile, Alabama. I told him before church, I said, I can't find your post. If you don't call me, I'm not going to be able to use you. You're not going to get the credibility you deserve. No, I'm just kidding. Here's what he said. He said, no argument for me. I just think the, the amount we tend to focus on the individualistic aspect of the faith, of a personal faith, and not enough do we, uh, oh, oh, let me just see if I can read this. I'm trying to paraphrase because he sent it to me during church. Couldn't answer the phone before church. Thank you, Brock. <laughs> so I'm trying to paraphrase. Let me just read it. No argument from me there. I just think the amount we tend to focus on the individualistic aspect of the personal faith is too disproportionate to the amount we talk about the corporate aspect of a collective faith. That we focus on your personal faith more than we, we focus on a 
corporate faith. Can I tell you that when he, Joshua says this, as for me and my house, it's individual and it's corporate. It's not just I'm deciding to follow, but my wife and my kids are going to follow too. I'm making a corporate decision for my family. Now, the gospel is individual. You are asked to, to ask Christ into your life, not everyone else's life. You work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You run your own race. Paul said, I have been poured out like a drink offering. That's Paul. That's you. You have to make your own decisions to follow Christ. And it is personal. But we is meant to have agreement. Can we be in agreement, in agreement without agreeing? You betcha. See, I think sometimes we think that we have to agree with everybody to be in agreement. No, I can be agreeable without agreeing with you. We've lost that art in America today. Hello? I, I'll give you an example. I don't like giving this example right now because my wife's here, but I will go ahead and do it. <laughs> this may be a newsflash to you guys. I don't agree with my wife all the time. Oh, it's not a newsflash? Okay, good. <laughs> I, we, we don't agree on everything. And I can tell you sometimes our discussions at home are heated. Can anybody say amen? amen. Good. You know who I am. I know who I'm talking to now. We, we don't agree on. But you know what? To use an old Paul Walker statement, there are some things we have agreed to disagree about. Some of us need to learn how to agree to disagree. Me and my wife, we do not like the same type of music. No, 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 no. We don't even, we don't even like the same styles. We don't have to choose artists. We don't even know the genre. genre. Like I, I, she can't even think about listening to Adam again in the car. She doesn't want to. It drives her nuts. It gives her a headache. Uh. And I don't want to listen to her mess. I was just, I don't want to have to do this. So you know what we've done? We have agreed to disagree on music in the car. You know what we have to do? We have to agree that we're not going to listen to music. We drive down the road for hours in silence because because we're going to agree to disagree, we can't talk. <laughs> right? That's the way we think. Because I disagree with your choice of music, we can't even be friends. By God, we don't even want to be married. <laughs> we, we're like that. We've decided that if we can't have a disagreement and be cordial about it and be agreeable about it, then we'll just blow up the whole thing. Gosh, sometimes we have to learn to agree with things we don't necessarily... I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about learning how to be agreeable in our disagreements. Learning how to get along with each other. We means to get past our petty disagreements. That we have, to become, we have become so isolated. And we've become so individualistic. That we think it's all about us. And we lose the power of agreement. Matthew chapter 18, verse, 20, uh, verse 19 and 20 says, I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth concerning uh, anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as followers, I am there among them. If two agree here on earth, See, we just have to come into agreement. I love, and I was like, I can't believe Michelle just starts preaching my sermon. She don't even know where I'm going with this. But you got to be careful who you come into agreement with, though. Because you can come into agreement with some mess. 
I'm not saying you've got to agree with everything they believe. I mean, me and my father-in-law, we've sat down and talked about politics and we'll just kind of ramble. There, there's, there's a couple in this church. It's family to some of you guys. I love, let me just say this. I love to give Tammy Brown a fit. I battle her all the time. Not because I disagree with her, just because I love to make her mad. <laughs> I will not be agreeable with her at all. I just like to make her mad. Uh, we've been friends for so long, I just like to aggravate. Michelle says that's my spiritual gift. I don't know if you guys knew that. <laughs> she says aggravation is my spiritual gift, and I'm good at it. She said God gave you a double portion of it, Mark. <laughs> but you need to be careful what you come into agreement with. See, we need to start declaring, as for me and my house, come into agreement. I can agree all day long by myself, and it doesn't, have any, it doesn't have any power. I mean, sure, I can declare what the word of the Lord says, and I can do all that, but it says, if any two, not if any one, I have to come into agreement with somebody, and I have to say, we're going to say, here's what the word of God says, and I put a resolve behind my thoughts when I come into agreement. So you can come into agreement and it'd be the wrong thing, and you can have a mess. What are you going to come into agreement with this coming year? Are you going to agree with the idea of we, that everybody, that, that the Scripture says God loves everybody, and you're going to love everybody too? Can you come into agreement with that? Can you come into agreement that we all are created in God's image, and he loves us all? Can you come into agreement with that? No matter what our economic status is, God cares about each one of us. And there are no big eyes or little U's in his kingdom. Can we come into agreement with that? The land of promise was given to the Israelites. And in Joshua chapter 7, verse 25, they come to run into a problem. They come into some people that aren't in agreement with them. Joshua chapter 7, verse 25 is talking about a guy by the name of Achan. And he says, then Joshua said to Achan, why have you brought trouble on us? <laughs> We're talking about agreement here. And here's this guy, and they are going in, the Israelites are going into the promised land. It's promised to them. God's given it to them. It's yours to possess. And they walk into Jericho, and they kick tail. They take names. They destroy. The, it says the walls fell flat. They just... The earth sucked them up, gone. We were over in Israel one time, and we're standing at Jericho, and one of the people on the tour asked the tour guide, he said, um, uh, and where, would, where are the walls, of, where, where exactly are the walls of Jericho? And I loved it. The guide was a Jew. He looked at us, he goes, do you guys not read your Bible? <laughs> and she said, I'm sorry, what do you mean? And he goes, if you read your Bible, you know it said that they, they, were, they, were, they were gone. There, there, there aren't any ruins of the walls because they're gone. And I think sometimes they walked in and just took over. They didn't have to climb over the walls. They just walked in and took it. But then they got to the next battle. And because Achan had stole, he hadn't done what he was supposed to do. When they go into the next battle, it says that the Israelites lose the battle. And Joshua comes back and goes to God and says, hey, what's happening, dude? How did we get in this mess? You told us it was our land to conquer and possess. What's happened? And God reveals to him that there's an enemy in the camp. That there's someone that's not in agreement with what has been said by God. And this is where they go and find Achan. And he says, you've brought trouble on us. The Lord will, bring, will now bring trouble on you. And all the Israelites stoned Achan and his family and burned their bodies. Because they didn't come into agreement. By the way, if anybody needs to, oh, I'm, I didn't mean to say it while people were leaving. I was fixing to say, if any of you need to leave because you're afraid of being stoned because you're not in agreement, you can leave now. <laughs> there they go. <laughs> uh, hey, this agreement thing is a big deal. You say, well, why are there so many churches? Because there's churches that you come into agreement. Churches are like families. Churches are like 
personalities. Churches are like people. And there's churches that you come into agreement with. That you agree with what's being spoken in the pulpit. You agree with the family. You agree with the body. You agree with what's being, being done in the community. And you say, I'm coming into agreement. That's why membership is so important. That's why you say, when I become a, a member, when I become a part of the family, when I, when I, when I come forward, then I'm saying, I am coming into agreement with what this body believes. What are you agreeing with? Can I tell you on a side note, this isn't just center point and city light. This is the whole body. That's why when crazy stuff happens, it makes the whole body look bad. The other day we were, again, just kind of surfing around tried to stay off of Facebook and I was on Facebook for the church. It makes me sound more holy. <laughs> and I, I got to City Lights page and this guy comes on there. I'm, I don't know him. And he says, uh, I do not recommend this church. What? And you can't just say stuff. I'm one of those guys, you can't just say stuff. You, you, I, my wife says I'm the Facebook police. You cannot just say stuff. I'm going to check it out. So I start looking at him. Where are you from? From, from? from Ohio. Does he have any friends that are here around our city or in our, have been in our church? No. No mutual friends. Now he lives in North Carolina. Have you ever been? I'm checking him out. I, he's not anywhere close. To, okay, where's the closest city light church to him? Well, there's one in Toledo. I mean, not Toledo, uh, that Ohio city, it starts with a T. What is it? Toledo. Toledo. Oh, thank you, Michelle. <laughs> For Michelle to know where, uh, it's just, it's, a, <laughs> do you, it's awesome. I am, a miracle still happened. God is performing them right here before your eyes. Toledo, Ohio. And then I looked and seen where the closest one in North Carolina. He's an hour from one in North Carolina. Dude, you have the wrong city like church. Said we weren't biblical in our response. I was like, you don't know us. <laughs> You've got the wrong church. We got people in Asia, Indonesia that go to give us a two like. I'm like. There's a city light in Singapore. That's the one you're talking about. You haven't even been to my church. Quit giving me a two. This guy doesn't know us. So we start asking questions. He enters in a conversation with us. He says, well, there's this guy that's, that's the leader of the city light church movement. No, he ain't. No, he ain't. We had our name before he had his name. He is not. Some guy in Seattle, he says, is not scriptural and biblical in his response. He's not a part of us. It's not who we are. Guys, we can talk about who we're going to agree with. You better agree with Christ-based, Bible-believing people. But we are all the body when we believe in Christ. When we follow his teachings, we are the body. We. And that's why when People go out and do stupid that are a part of the body of Christ. We all suffer for it. Because we're family, we're connected. That doesn't mean you have to be perfect. But would you please try to follow his teachings? If you're going to go around talking about being a Christian, at least try to act like one. Because when we come into agreement, we all come together. And it costs us all. But we all gain the power from being in agreement with it as well. Third thing. And I love this one. Because this is where it really comes together. There's victory in we. I love it when they started singing the song today. And I was like, yep. It really is about the victory we have. Romans chapter 8 verse 31 says this. What shall we say about such wonderful things as this? If God be for us, who can ever be against us? I love, it's us, we. He's for us. That we win. 
person was in seminary school and the school that they were having seminary at didn't have a gymnasium so they had to play out on the streets and these college students were outside. They were at a gymnasium. They, I mean, they were at a nearby public school and they were playing outside. And an elderly janitor oftentimes waited patiently outside until the seminary students finished playing. And uh, inevitably, every time they were there, he would be sitting outside and he would be reading the Bible. And one day, one of the, one of the young men, one of the seminary students went by and said, hey, what are you reading? The man answered, he said, I'm reading the book of Revelations. Surprised, the, the young man asked back, he said, and you understand it? He said, yes. I said, I understand it. The young man asked back, he says, well, what does it mean? He, quietly, the, the older janitor man spoke back and he said, it means that Jesus is going to win. He said, in the end, that was the best commentary I'd ever heard in my life for the book of Revelations. Jesus is going to win. It's a biblical mindset. Jesus wins. But when we read that if God be for us, who can be against us? Can I give you some great news that we win too? Because we are connected to him, we win. We get access to the kingdom of God and we win. I love this in the, in the message because it says this. It says, so what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? <laughs> you want to talk about a, a victory march? If God be for us, not who can be against us. No, how can you lose? Over the last couple of weeks, we've watched ball games, football games. La yesterday, uh, people at my home were watching the Houston game. It was like, how could they lose the game? And then in the end, it's like, oh no, it's tied. You've got to make sure you don't lose. But for us as believers, for us as the we, understand that victory is already established. See, you must not get it. Because when victory is established, I get to rest in the knowledge that my fighting is going to be for my good. Have you ever done something and you didn't know if you were going to win? Come on, I'm looking at you. A lot of you, you've fought and you've lost a lot. I can tell. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. When we're we, we don't put down family. Oh, you know that's not true. You've been with Christmas. You know you do. Uh, hello? Can, I mean, that was a joke. I mean, that was, I don't know about your family. I know most families. You, you, got, you got aunts and uncles that you wish wouldn't have come over for dinner. Really? You guys got that good a family? Man, that's amazing. So when I know I'm fighting something that I might lose, sometimes I'll hold back. I was like, I might not win at this. You might not win. With God for us, we can't do anything but win. We can't lose. Guys, if we'll stay close to him, during this time of fasting and prayer, take time to draw close to him. Because with him, victory has already been established. We win. We are victorious. And here's the great news. It's not just for us in this room. I get so tired of churches fighting other churches. I get so tired of it being us against them. I get so tired of the, the mentality that divides, as I talked about in the beginning. Don't allow yourself to be those people. We, meaning this church and every other church. I love the, the pastor at Cornerstone. It used to be Cornerstone. What's the name of that place now? New Life. New Life. Thank you. It's not them. They're part of we. Uh, Clay and Sabrina uh, Paget have 
they, they now live in Cleveland, Tennessee. They have a church up there, the tribe. You know what the great news about that is? They're a part of we. We got some friends that we introduced them to Clay and Sabrina. They're now pastoring in Madison. And, and great, but they're a part of we. I got people I haven't even met yet. I got people that I'm going to get to heaven and meet that are a part of the we that I don't even know about yet. They're a part of my family. And I don't want to divide. And we have to be careful that we become a family. I am praying for every church in this city. I am praying for every church in LaGrange. I am praying for every church in Georgia. I want God to pour out his blessings on the church. But if we start dividing, and if we start looking at people that aren't like us and start saying them versus we, we can lose. Because we get out from underneath his covering. We get out, um, out from under his blessing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the power, agreement, and victory of we is ours. God, as we enter into this new year, a year that is, that is preordained to be a year of focus. 2020, vision. God, don't let us miss what we are to become. That the division and the arguments and the petty disagreements that we have with people are simply keeping people from the kingdom. That we, try, we are dividing and we are not conquering. We are dividing and causing less people into our circles. God, let us be inclusive let us have our arms open wide. Let we be the focus of every conversation and every desire we have that we would include more, that we would open our arms to more, that we would be ready for more, not more blessing, not more for me individualistically. I, I, I want more in the body. Let we grow strong, courageous in the faith of God, that I don't have to agree with you all the time, but we can be agreeable. And we'll see the glory of God. With your heads bowed. <clears throat> Scripture. Scripture. It says, you'll know that they're my disciples, that they have love one for another. I don't always agree with my wife, but I love my wife. I may not always agree with you, but I can love you. But I can only do that because of a God who first loved me that gave himself for me. And we just celebrated Christmas where God sent his very son to come and die for us. And he came to die for all of us. So no matter who you are today, no matter where you're sitting in your life, no matter what struggles or battles you're facing, or no matter how good life is and you think you've got the world by the tail, God still came and sent His Son for you. And if you're here today and you don't know Him, what a great way to start off the year by becoming part of the family of God. What a great way to start 2020 with a clear vision of who you are in Christ. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you, you haven't prayed a prayer and asked Him to come into your heart. Today, you'd like to make that decision to follow Christ. Would you just slip your hand up right where you're seated? Just say, Mark, today's the day I want to accept Christ. I want to pray the prayer. 